In this video, we're going to take a look at how to record clean audio into GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And we're back here in GarageBand to show you how we can record clean vocals, clean guitars, any clean audio sound. And when we say clean, we mean no processing. So you may be aware that in GarageBand, you've got different voice and different vocal effects here. You've got drum effects, you've got keyboard, you've got acoustic guitar, vocal and producer effects. And they're all very cool, but sometimes you actually just want to start at scratch and you want to start with a clean audio signal. So that's what we're going to cover in this one. Now to demonstrate this, I've got a track that I created here for a previous video about using auto-tune on vocals. That one's linked up the top there and in the description. But as you may recall, to add a new audio track, we tap on the plus button here in the bottom left. Then we go to the audio recorder. But instead of just tapping right on there, let's tap in the bottom right on more sounds. And you can see here that we could choose one of our other processed effects by by searching through these menus here, or we can actually go to fun and then tap on clean. Don't ask me why Apple decided that the clean audio setting would be in fun, but it is, so that's where you go. So here you go, this is the clean audio setting, and we can now get this set up and ready to record. However, you may have noticed that we actually have two dials here. So you're saying, Pete, you said this was clean, why do we have dials here? Well, they're not actually set to anything, and these dials are actually some basic EQ, or tone controls, and compression controls. If we tap on the little mixer icon here in the top left, and go into our plugins and EQ, you can see that this tone is actually this effect EQ. So if we want to make sure that we don't have any tone, any ability to add bass or treble here, we can just tap that one to turn it off. Likewise, this squeeze here, this one connects to our compressor. So you can see as soon as we turn on any squeeze, our compressor comes on and it's a basic, simple way of setting some compression. So once again, we can turn it down or turn it off there to make sure that we have a 100% clean track ready to record. Now, if you're just starting out in Garage band and that was all a bit too quick for you don't worry there's a video link down in the description and up the top there that's my starting from scratch so that's 10 tips if you're starting a brand new garage band project so if you want to learn more about setting up your tracks audio recorders virtual instruments and a whole lot more check out that video in the description or at the end of this one so now if we go back to our track view here in the top left you can see that we are ready to record and we can get a clean audio recording into our track so to demonstrate demonstrate this, I've plugged in a microphone into the input of my audio interface. This is my AKG D5 using a red XLR cable because it goes faster, we know that. If you want to check out any of the gear that I use and recommend in this video, once again, there's a link down in the description or you can head to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Let's get ready to record. We're going to tap on the microphone icon in the top left there. We've got our clean microphone here. All we need to now do is turn our monitoring on like so and now now we are coming through this AKG D5. So let me just turn off this mic and we'll record a quick vocal take into GarageBand using this one. When you open your eyes up to the sky above and you see the world. So there you go, our recording is done. We can tap in the top left here to go back to our track view. And there it is recorded. Yeah, the levels look around about right. Let's just hit play and listen to these vocals with the track. When you open your eyes up to the sky above and you see the world. So you can hear there, because we're using a high quality microphone, a high quality audio interface, my Steinberg UR22C, we're getting some nice clean vocals in here. The reason we would wanna do this is if you don't wanna use the presets, but instead you wanna dial in all your own custom presets, that's what you can do. And that's what I'll show you how to do right now. So we'll tap back on the microphone icon here and come back to this screen. Now, the quick way to do this is to just use your preset. So you can tap right here on the microphone icon. Now, if you're on an iPhone, it'll be in the top left under a drop down menu. Just tap on that and then tap the same microphone icon. And then you can choose again from any of these different categories, drums, keyboards, acoustic guitar, producer effects, or more than likely vocals. So if we wanted to say add the lead vocal effects to this one, we just tap lead vocals. And then there you can see instantly we've got some tone, some compressed, 
compressor, some vocal hall, some overdrive. And if we tap on our mixer icon here and go into plugins and EQ, you can see that we have a whole bunch of options already preset in there that we can now play around with. So let's take a listen to what the lead vocals would sound like on this track. When you open your eyes up to the sky above and you see so you can hear there, we've got some reverb, we've got some compression, it's a lot louder, it's a lot more in your face. So if you want a quick way to get there, that's something that you can do. But what if you want to do it all completely custom? Well, let's just tap on lead vocals here, we'll go back to fun, we'll go back to clean, and we'll hit done on that one. So now, as long as we turn all these off, we've got nothing on there, this is 100% clean. Let's again just take a listen to that. When you open your eyes up, Nothing there. We've got a blank canvas, a clean slate, a different cliche. We can get ready now to add in whatever effects we want. So let's show you how to do that. So once again, we want to go to our mixer icon up here in the top left, tap on that one. Now on your iPhone, that could be in a different location. Just tap some of the drop down menus. As long as you get to this view where you can attack your mixer like this. Now we're going to tap on plugins and EQ. And now we can start actually adding in different effects. So by default, we've got the noise gate, the compressor, the effect EQ and the visual EQ. Now what I can do is tap on the edit button here. Let's remove this effect EQ. We don't want that tone knob at all. So we tap there and we tap delete. That's gone, and now we've got four slots free to add in whatever effects we want. So let's have some fun. Let's spice up this clean vocal with a few effects. Now, if we go a bit too fast in this one, don't worry. I've got a complete plugins and effects guide, which is down in the description and a video linked at the end of this one. So you can check that out. But let's just tap on the plus button here. Let's start layering up some cool effects. So why don't we start with a track echo? I always like a bit of a quarter note delay and echo there. We'll just turn the wet down down so it doesn't overpower us with echo here. Then we're going to add another one. We'll tap edit again. We'll tap plus. Let's get some track reverb going on there, shall we? Uh, again, we'll dial the wet down. Otherwise, uh, all these effects are going to sound like a, a mess by the end of it. So we'll just add in the reverb. Let's do edit again. Why don't we add in a little bit of uh, overdrive? I always like a little bit of distortion on a vocal. Not too much, not that much distortion uh, of 11 dB, but maybe just one or two, just around like that. And then again, we'll tap edit. And let's finish off with a flanger effect, shall we? We'll tap the flanger. And again, we'll just make sure that it's uh, not set too aggressively. There you go. We've layered up four different effects there. We'll turn the compressor on. Just give it a little bit of compression as well, just to make sure that the vocal's really popping out. Now, without testing this, let's just hit play and see what we've done by adding these effects to our clean vocal. When you open your eyes up, So not bad, right? Yeah, you, you'd play around with these, you'd dial in different things, but you can see there the combination of the echo, the reverb, the overdrive and the flanger, we've given it a whole new feel and we can then have complete control over exactly which effects we add in here and how much we dial in. And even better than that, if you've got third party apps or plugins that you've downloaded, you can tap on edit here. Let's say we wanted to remove this flanger and hit plus again. We can go to audio unit extensions and here all of the different plugins that I've downloaded. There's a bunch of free plugins as well as paid plugins. I can actually add those into my track as well. So if I wanted to grab this FAC Maxima, I can add that in here and then this will link out to that actual plugin and we can adjust all the settings here. Very, very cool. And once again, I've got another video which will be linked down there with a list of the best free AUV3 plugin. So if you want to get into playing around with your sound in GarageBand, jump down to the description and check that one out as well. There you have it. If you wanted to start out with a clean vocal, a clean guitar, a clean sound to record in GarageBand, that's how you do it. And then you can add whatever effects, whatever other layers you want. Hope you found this useful. There's two more videos linked down below there that you can check out all about using GarageBand to record your music. And I'll see you next time.